Oh, hey, I'm glad you're here. Check this out. So while you were gone, I kept my eye on the uh, discount page, which if you go into the store, the little percent in the, it's like a sale sign or something. This is the discounts page. I don't know if I explained this before, but everything here is at a reduced price because it has hours on it and uh, needs repair. It's basically used equipment. But for the price of our tractor, I was able to find us a new tractor right here. Look at our pretty boy. Uh, I got the front loader for it. I tried to color match it. It's pretty close, not exact, but it's fine. I mean, you do, it's just for aesthetics. It does have fewer horsepower. It's 171 though, which is pretty close. We were at 190. So we're still fairly close to the same power that we were at before, but obviously this one has a front loader and it has a front PTO with a full front three-point harness. The other one had the front three-point harness, but it was like an unpowered modified one. So I think this one will work better. But it's November. We have both eggs and soybeans? No. Sorghum. No. We're not selling that. Canola. We have canola to sell. Ooh, actually, we might... Might could wait. What are we at right now? Max is 21.63. Right now, we can get 20... 159 at the oil mill that 2450 still we'd have to rent the train which eats in a little bit to your profits so you want to do that when you're bulk selling since we have like one trailer full we'll sell it at the oil mill so let's tag this we'll get the canola over to the oil mill where's our trailer there it is uh so let me hook this up we might actually have just over one trailer's worth because this is a pretty small trailer. I think this is an eight cubic meter trailer, which means we'll have, what was it? Just a little over that, wasn't it? We'll have maybe a couple hundred liters left. Let's see, what do we got? Oh, no, yeah, we'll have 273 liters left. I'm not going to make a whole second trip for that. So I hit R, pick the one I want, hit enter. I'm gonna hit N to cover it. I'll bring this to the oil mill. Okay, so it's back there, you see the light. We pull it up on the map. That'll be right here, okay. So I'll hit you up when we get there. Okay, look here we are coming up to the, what was it called, oil mill? The place where we sell the canola natural oils. So we'll just pull over this. This is a um, production chain building. You could buy it. Uh, let's go ahead and unload these. So you could buy it. It'll take sunflower oil, or it'll take sunflowers, canola, and one other thing. What is the other thing these take? Do, 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 do. What's an oil mill look like? That's a sugar mill. Taylor shop, cereal factory, oil mill. Okay, so it'll take, oh, olives. Yeah, olives to make olive oil. But it'll make oil out of those, and then you can sell those or potentially use them. Somewhere else can you use those in a bakery. No. Yeah, you may be able to only sell those unless you get mods that use them in other recipes. Because there are other production chains out there that you can get in the mod hub. But, oh, I didn't see what we got. Right? Easy way to tell. Since I missed it popping up on screen, what do we got for harvest income? 17,299 for that trailer full. So that's good. We'll save the rest. It's only a couple hundred liters. It's fine. That's not going to make us that much. Um, and we'll head back to the farm. And then we'll go sell the very few eggs that we have. Alright, I'll see you there. 
Okay, so I went ahead and put the trailer away. And since we have just one stack of eggs, we're just going to sell it at the closest place, which I think is just across the street. Eggs are right here. Fast food restaurant. Yeah, we'll get 4000 uh, We could get like another $200 if we went. 150 if we go down to the bakery. We'll go to the bakery. That's pretty close. Farmer's Market's way over there, and it's not very much. I think we have a thousand liters. Is that what one stack is? No, not even. 263 pieces, so we're going to get a couple hundred bucks for these eggs. But might as well sell them now because they're at their highest price. Uh, but it's a good time to talk about, like, front loaders and stuff. So, if we pull up F1, you can see not only is it listed the buttons that you can hit to do things, but in the upper right and upper left hand of that little help control menu, it shows the mouse buttons. And if you click on it, it'll show what it does. So this is the left mouse button. If you go left and right, it tilts your forks up and down. And if you go up and down with your mouse while holding that button, it lifts and lowers it. And then left click, if you move in and out, you can see it changes the width of your forks. These are, they're not bad. Controls, they take a little getting used to. The controls are much better than the physics. If you get, it's really easy to get goofy on these. So if you point down too far and then go into a, a pallet, Oh, this one's not going to do it right now, of course. But sometimes you'll get your fork stuck in the map, which is not super fun. Um, and, and just other stuff like that. You have to be on them fairly precise. If you're trying to load them on a trailer, you have to be really level when you're pulling out or you'll pull the pallet back off. And it just takes playing with. Um, like anything in the game, it just takes time to get used to the controls and used to the way the game works but I will drive this down to the bakery and we'll see how much money we do get from a couple of eggs all right so we're down at the bakery and much like I was trying to explain with the hay and then it didn't end up working that way typically with inputs like this you don't actually have to unload them at all you just have to drive them into the input so let's see if it actually works this time. If we try it, yeah, see it's going, boom. $1,131 for our 263 eggs. And you just have to drive them into the input. That's good to know, uh, one, because you know how to get them into the input. And two, you know, not to drive into the input with things you don't want to sell at that place. Um, if you have like a trailer set up and you have multiple skids or pallets of different products that you want to sell at multiple places. If you drive it into an input that will take those products, it will. They'll just disappear. You don't have any control over it. There's no button you hit or nothing. So you got to be careful about that because sometimes you'll sell it at a cheaper price than you wanted to get uh, accidentally. Learn from my mistakes, basically, is what I'm saying. While we're here, there's this. You see this little, this is a manure spreader. It's a little wooden toy. Um, all the base game, I believe all of the base game maps, and many modded maps have these. It's not always wooden toys, um, but what it is, it's a, it's a collectible. If we hit F1, you can see R to collect. So if we hit R, that gave us $1,000. Oh, that was supposed to be a cedar. Didn't look like a cedar. Uh, there are nine more to be found. This map's actually pretty neat with it because... If I remember where it is, I think it's right up here. There's a store, which I believe is this place right here on the left, that as you collect them... Oh, there it is. It's the next place up. So as you collect them, once you get all of a specific type, 
they'll start showing up on the sh shelves in this store. You can't go into it or anything. It's just like a trophy shelf for your collectibles. And I always thought that was neat. There's 10 of each type, and I think there's 10 types total. Uh, and they're hidden throughout the map. So if you get bored farming or on a winter day when you got nothing else to do, you can certainly search all over the map and see if you can find the collectibles. Now that's really all we had to do in November. So I think I'm going to go ahead and time jump to... Oh, what was it? May? Let's see when it is. Do, 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 June. It's June. So we're going to probably time jump to June so we can collect that barley and try to set up our... Uh, the first portion of our inputs. So I'll bring you back once it's June and everything is harvested. I'll see you then. So we ended up with 23,218 liters of barley. Um, we're going to wait to sell that until December because that's when we'll get the best price. And regardless of what the prices are, we're going to sell that barley to the grain mill that we plan on buying. And I'll show you why when we get to December. But in the meantime, we ran into a little bit of an issue. Uh, just being that the barley harvest had way more straw bales than I feel like loading by hand. And also, the straw we probably won't sell until... Oh, where's straw? There it is. Uh, also December. So we'll sell that in December. We need some place to store it. I can't store it on a bale trailer because we're going to need that for other things. So what we're going to do, we're at the shop. I am going to lease a bale loader. I would just buy it, but it's $64,000 and we only have $31,000. So this is the one we need and we know it's the one we need because down here at the bottom... It says it'll do square bales at 120 centimeters. Uh, if we look at our baler, here it is. This says that it makes square bales at 120 centimeters. Now other balers make other things. There's this one, which will do round bales, 125 to 180 centimeters. This one does square bales also, but it's 180 to 240. And this one does square bales at 180 to 240 centimeters. So this is the one we want. It'll pick up the bales. It's the only one that'll pick up the bales that we have. We're going to lease it. Uh, 3,264. Well worth it. And uh, this one's kind of interesting. The way that it works. If it's the one I'm thinking it is. Once you pack it, because it... it will hold 14 bales once you pack it with the 14 bales and then you empty them out of this thing it basically it stacks them all together and then makes them into one big bale which i don't believe you can pick up with the other ones um i think it's an odd size and shape for the other uh bale loaders but there are front loader attachments, which we're not going to get right now. But if we come to front loaders, front loader tools. So when we do front loader tools, there's obviously just regular bail spikes. But yeah, there's this thing here, which this is a bail spike with an extra claw on the side. So you can stick the bale spikes in and then close the claws around it and hold like a big stack of bales. We'll end up using that um, when we transport those. And while I'm in here, I want to show you. So when we got our tractor, doesn't matter which one, just has to be one that it'll work on. Okay, so when we did the front loader on our tractor, they did all that off screen. There's Quickie and Hauer are the two um brands that you can get 
a front loader attachments. Some John Deere's have a John Deere brand, but they work, I believe, with all the front loader. Um, you pick between the two of them. I think they cost the same. And then you have to buy the front loader itself, which there's the quickie style and then the Hauer style. Um, I'm not 100% sure because I don't think I've ever tried it. You may be able to, regardless of what front loader attachments on the tractor, use any front loader. But I usually just keep the brands the same. So like if I put a quickie attacher onto a tractor, I'll use a quickie. I don't know if that's how you say that or not. That's what it looks like it is. Um, but I'll, I'll put the same branded loader on there. And then you have some John Deere front loaders and a Kloss. But the way that these work, like all of these Q branded, whatever this name is, they're basically all the same, except for you see they have a horsepower rating. So that's 60, 80, 100, 120, 140. Basically, you buy the biggest one that's under, it's, it's like Price is Right rules, the, the highest without going over. So if you have a 115 horsepower tractor that you want to put this on, you wouldn't really go with 120 because it'll be, it, it would work, but it'll be probably too big for the body of the tractor. The 100 horsepower would fit with the tractor a little bit better. Uh, if you have a, a 40 horsepower tractor that somehow has a front loader attachment on it and you go to put 140 horsepower front loader on it it might not even pick it up i'm not sure about that but this would definitely be way too big it would probably tip it right forward like even if it could move the hydraulics just the weight of this would probably hold it down on the ground so you just pick it based on what brand you like and what horsepower rating it is that's it there's not really a lot to it um but it doesn't explain that anywhere. And so I figured I'd let you know. I did all that off screen because it was on one of the off months. And I knew we were gonna need it to move uh, stuff around. But these, the bail loaders are, are an excellent tool because it saves so much time. Like we could just get a bail spike and move all these bales with the bail spike, but that also would take forever because there's a lot of them. Uh, so, we'll just hit X to unfold it. Maybe not. Is it B? It's B. Okay, so B puts it into position, which if I opened F1, I would see that. So right now we're in work position. It says B for transporting position. And that's it for this one. So we'll go around. And all you do, it's got the little, the little conveyor here. And you just want to kind of line that up. It's got the little spikes. It'll grab it. It doesn't have to be perfectly oriented. But you just drive it into the, into the bales and it'll pick them up. And then it loads it into this cartridge, just hopper in the back. And we'll see how goofy we can get on this. If we can hit it like almost dead to the side and it'll still probably pick it up some of them will some of them won't yeah see it flopped it right the way that it needs to go so this will get 14 and then it'll be full so let's go ahead and do that it won't pick up one while there's one on the conveyor being loaded yet so it takes a little bit of time, but not nearly the same amount of time as it would doing all this by hand. So we're at seven, we're halfway there. We'll get 14 of these picked up. And then I'll show you unloading. There's 10, we'll clean up this end down here. I can drive straight enough to get us into that bell. Come on, you. There we go.
Oh, this has a manual on it. I was thinking, man, this thing is uh, taking a second to shift. Like, you definitely have some shift lag, but it's because it, this has a manual transmission. I know the tractor does. So that just makes sense. All right. So there's our last one. We're completely full. It just sticks it in at the bottom. So we can close that up because we're not using it. We gotta pick a spot to put these. Oh. Let's see. We'll just line them up next to the barn here for right now. So, my guess is it's going to be Y to unload, but let's see. Yes, Y to unload bales. Alright, so it puts the arm down. Opens it up, and then it'll just drop it out of the back. I might have to hit Y again. Yes. So we can either X to abort, meaning it'll close it back up, or Y to unload. So Y to unload. And as you see, like I was saying, that is now basically one big bale. Uh, that's 9,800 liters of straw. We can't pick it up because it's 448 kilograms. We could R to cut it open, which might let us take the individual bells. But we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is pick the bells up in this form onto the bale trailer when we go to transport them. That's why I want that larger um, bale spike thing. Even a regular bale spike probably wouldn't be bad on these because these will all stick together now. Like it's one, one unit. So we can bale spike right into the side of it. Let's close this up. So Y for operating position. And we'll put that little sidebar up. Transport position. There we go. Alright, so I'll get all of these uh, picked up and stored. And then we'll probably time skip to December. It's December for both, right? December for the straw. And then December for the barley. Oh, and by the way, the sorghum, we still have four and a half thousand liters left. Those chickens are not eating very much at all. I think it's two, 250 liters a month they're eating right now. Um, so it's not very much, which is good. And we ended up, we have 28, 29, 30 chickens. This one's six months old, 14 that are eight months old, 14 that are 16 months old, and then the rooster. So, yes, I will see you again in December when we're ready to do the rest of this. Mm -hmm.